Today I'm gonna to talk to you all about what's been going on in Edmonton's real estate market for the month of October. All right, so we've been hearing this a lot in the news and in my social media messages. If you're following me, the market has slowed down, yes. However, that being said, though it does look on paper like a buyer's market, it's actually quite challenging as a buyer to find a property, especially when you're looking in the most high demand price points of anywhere from 300 to 500. It's really difficult to find a property that is priced well because we do have some properties on the market that are expecting prices from February of this year and you and I both know that's not gonna happen. Interest rates have gone up and buyers have become a lot more sensitive to price. And so buyers are thinking it's a buyer's market, which it is, um, however, they're trying to give prices that they used to lowball five, six years ago. And then sellers are at February peak market pricing. And so you can see the discrepancy in what is causing the influx and the slowdown of the market right now. So if you look at the absorption rate, which is how many listings come on the market and percentage of how fast they'll sell, if they will sell, the higher that number, the more likely it is a seller's market we're at 17.29%. So we are definitely dropping quite drastically from where we were earlier this year. I was hoping we would stay at a balanced market, but unfortunately we went from one end to the other end. And I suspect in the coming months with November, December, January, typically seasonally slower months anyways, we're probably gonna stay around that same absorption rate because we're not gonna see a whole lot of new listings come up or a ton of sales. Now I do suspect in the new year, we'll probably start to see a shift again, just the normal seasonal highs and lows that we'll be facing. So if you take a look at the average price, we were at one point all the way just over 500,000 for a single family home in Edmonton, and now it's dropped all the way back down to 469. It is lower than it was last month, but it's still higher than it was last year. And if you remember last year at this time, the interest rates were quite a bit lower. So even if you bought a house last year, you had it lower interest rate, and you had lower price. This year, we have the prices higher than it was last year and the interest rates quite a bit higher. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that you shouldn't buy anymore and you should be waiting? Well, you have to remember that the pricing of houses and when you enter the market needs to be yes on the interest rates, but also your family situation. Are you needing to purchase now? Are you owning a home right now and needing to move up? You need to take a whole bunch of other things into consideration other than just the media scaring you into buying a house now. It is important to have a professional look at your specific home, how fast it would sell and what you're looking to move into. So overall, you can see that in the year 2021 and 2022, we saw significant increases of price of average homes compared to the prior years of a very insignificant increase and then declines in the previous years. So for the number of active listings on the market right now, we definitely have less than we did last month, but it is higher than it was last year. Now, when you have higher inventory, it means that typically, buyers have more choices as long as the sales stay low. If the sales are high and the listings are high, it doesn't really make a buyer's market. But because the sales have also declined, um, that's also where that whole thing happens. So we're just under 600 listings sold last month in October. So actually there was a slight increase month over month from the September sales, but it is down from last year. Now the increase is a very insignificant increase. It was less than half a percentage. So the average pricing of properties right now is definitely being impacted because our the movement of properties isn't happening as quickly and so things are sitting longer. But as a buyer, if you're looking and you can't find anything, you're also waiting a long time because not as much stuff is coming on the market and it probably isn't going to increase a whole lot in the next few months. So as a seller, it's important to note that if you are looking to sell, there is an opportunity because there are still buyers looking to buy and they can't find anything. However, you have to remember that there's less buyers looking, yes, because of the weather and it's snowing and no one wants to really move in the winter anymore, but also because the interest rates have initially scared people and we keep hearing this news all constantly, like it's increasing, it's increasing, and it's, it's causing some um, buyer lack of confidence. And so a lot of them are kind of holding back. They're also not seeing a whole lot of properties on the market. So they may be taking a break till the next year and not even looking anymore. So there is a big risk as a seller to put your house on the market in this time of year. I also suggest if you're looking to sell your house in the winter months, 
January is actually one of the better months to do it in other than December because December, everyone is gonna be, especially this year, gonna be doing entertaining, they're gonna be doing parties that they haven't been able to do for a few years. So we probably will see less of listings and sales happen in the coming months as well. So if you take a look at the average days on market, we're pretty much the same as we were last month. And if you take a look at last year, it's pretty similar. It's not too small of a change. I mean, it is a small change. It went from 46 days now to 42 last year. And we've never seen anything under 30, like in the 20s for a really long time. Like I'm talking years, but then this year we actually saw the market be so quick that the average days was under 30 days. It was in, in between 20 to 30 days. Is that gonna happen next year? I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball, but what I can tell you is the past history, we've always been in the 35 to 46 days on market. And even though we've been at that for years and years prior, our properties always sell. You don't have to worry about the average days on market being your average days on market. Depending on who you work with, they have an average days on market. And for us, no matter what the market is, we have a strategy put in place which includes pricing, marketing, and how we make your house look is going to be super important in terms of how fast your house is gonna sell. So if you look at the market distribution, no big surprise, 20% of sales so far this year, and we've got two more months left to go, is 28% was in the four to 499 range. Shortly right behind it, is the three to 399 range, just over 24%. So you can see the bulk of the sales in Edmonton are between three to 500,000. There's still great single family homes that you can purchase. And you may have to adjust your expectations because pricing has changed so much in the last two years. What you can get for your dollar is different. And if you're looking to move up in the market, what you can sell your house for is higher, but maybe lower than the last year. Uh, but when you purchase your next home, now upgraders, you have a market for you. Because the market did increase a little bit and it's come down a little bit, it hasn't come down so much that it's as low as it was a few years ago. So you're still making a little bit more there. And the price of the higher end homes has come down and it has now become more affordable. So it does allow for upgraders to really consider for this coming year, a really good strategy and a really good time for you to purchase that next dream home. You can look at the sales between five to 5.99 for the year to date, all the homes this year sold, it was just over 17% of sales. So if you look at the sales between six to 6.99, that was just under 10%. And then when you look at all the higher end properties of 700,000 and higher, the percentage goes down lower and lower. Um, over a million dollars, we had just under 1.5% of sales. And then you look higher and higher, so 1.5 and 2 million, they were all less than half a percentage of the entire sales. Now don't forget all these sales statistics do not include new build properties. New build properties, have seen a significant increase over the last year, and then they're starting to see some decreases in the last month. And I'm talking, they're significantly decreasing now. So they went from, we're not gonna negotiate with you anymore, and we're gonna keep increasing the prices, to now we're starting to see 10,000, 20,000, $30,000 price reductions. Now, they're still a lot higher than they were a year or two years ago, so, because they've gone up, 100, 150K more than they used to be. So that 10,000 is not gonna be massively significant. But if you're interested in new build properties and what's going on in the new build world, we will be having videos starting next year, monthly about what's going on in the new build market. Now back to Edmonton, if you're thinking about what's going on in Edmonton's real estate market, in conclusion, it is moving very slowly, but it is going to continue to keep going. At Edmonton market, you're always selling and buying. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks so much for watching.